Hello and welcome to the Nerdy Things with Brendan channel. I'm your host Brendan. Today I'm going to be reviewing some books I read in September 2023. I've made a few of these videos in the past and they've gradually gotten more views each time so I really appreciate the support. But if you like this let me know and I'll keep making them. The first book I read this month was Deceased, Dead Planet. I'm a big fan of Deceased so far and each book I've read has not let me down. The original Deceased was awesome, I love it, then Deceased The Unkillables, the second one was fantastic, I really love that book. And now I read this one and I thought it was fantastic as well. Each of these books were written by Tom Taylor who I love, I don't know if he does it on purpose but his books are just fan service overload which I have no problem with. But his current Nightwing series is amazing, I've read almost every Nightwing book there is. And his is by far the best we've had since Chuck Dixon back in the 90s. Tom Taylor seems to know exactly what we fans want and gives it to us every time. I don't want to give too much away and spoil the story if you plan to go read this after watching this, but I really enjoy this book. Definitely have to read Deceased before reading this. Reading Deceased The Unkillables will elevate the story as well, but as long as you generally know what's going on in Deceased, you're going to be alright. I feel like I can give you some detail because Deceased has been out for a few years and it's the synopsis of the book, but the supervillain Darkseid has an anti-life equation, the guy wants to bring death to the masses. The equation can kill anyone, no superhero is safe, many of our favorite heroes are dying or fighting to survive, those who die are essentially now zombies, and there's some really incredible moments in the whole series that are now my favorite comic book moments ever. I won't tell you which book so I don't ruin anything, but Jason Todd driving the Batmobile with an undead Joker strapped to the hood was damn near the coolest thing ever. This book, Deceased Dead Planet, sees the survivors after five years of fighting the anti-life equation. I think my one criticism in this is there's multiple plot threads throughout and most are wrapped up by the end, but there's one huge one just left unanswered. Now, why is that? Because it's the plot of the next book, it leaves you wanting more. But if you're looking for a nice, complete story, this one does leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger. That, and there's some really dumb moments that drove me nuts. Like, if characters could see the future, they'd be pissed with what they did. And as the reader, you're really just left screaming, What the hell? Why did you do that? There's also a revelation in this that changes everything and leaves you thinking, Well, shit. If only they knew that a couple years ago, and now I guess we gotta just deal with it. Additionally, I'm not a huge fan of John Constantine. I like him, but he really shines in this book, and now I kinda wanna go read his comics. He's great in this book. But I really recommend this book. I think you will enjoy it. I really love Tom Taylor's work. He hasn't let me down yet, and I cannot wait for the next DC's book. After reading DC's Dead Planet, I wanted to get caught up on the Darth Vader series, so the next book I had to read was Darth Vader Volume 6, Return of the Handmaidens, and in my opinion, the Vader comics are very good. Years ago, when Disney bought Star Wars, they started a Vader series to fill in the gaps between the movies and tell their version of Star Wars. All the older Star Wars comics were then labeled Legends and Don't Count Now. The first Vader series took place between episodes 3 and 4, and it was phenomenal, so good. The second series was in between episodes 4 and 5, and is still pretty good, but not as good as the last one. And the current series is taking place between episodes 5 and 6, and it's pretty good so far. I really like it. I have to spoil a little bit of the story to tell you what's going on, so if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead a minute. In The Phantom Menace, we saw Padme Amidala had handmaidens that would dress as her to keep her safe. In the Vader series, we see some of these handmaidens had survived the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. Vader finds these girls and is sentimental because they look similar to Padme because they would act as her doubles. But one of these girls is Sabe, the handmaiden played by Kira Knightley in The Phantom Menace. The Vader series has her team up with Vader and it's been quite good so far. In this book, the surviving handmaidens come looking for Sabe, believing she is being held captive by Vader and being forced to do things she doesn't want to do. And I really like this series so far. I like seeing a sentimental Vader. At this time, he knows he has a son with Padme. He's met Luke and tried to bring him to the dark side. It's all leading up to his redemption and the return of the Jedi. 
It works really well. And this storyline makes a ton of sense and really enforces his return to the light side. It shows there really is still good in him. It also helps reinforce episode 3 and Anakin's fall to the dark side. He regrets his decisions and everything he did was for love and to save Padme. And I always felt like Vader really just feels stuck in his current situation. It's the classic Yoda line, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. We've seen him through all of these stages. He was scared to leave his mother and join the Jedi, scared to lose Padme, angry at the Tuscans who almost killed his mother, angry at the Jedi. He's full of hate, kills the Jedis, falls to the dark side, and now he's suffering as Vader. He's lost Padme, and he can't undo what he's done. The Obi-Wan TV show also helped show that he's now stuck and regrets what he's done. He tells Obi-Wan, I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. So Vader now accepts his decisions and his fall to the dark side. He wants to return to the light, but it's just too late for him. But I really like this series. I think the idea to bring in the Handmaidens was genius and bring out that more sentimental side of Vader and really reinforce his redemption and return of the Jedi. I really recommend this book. I thought it was fantastic. After reading Vader Volume 6, I also had to read Vader Volume 7, Unbound Force. Now this book doesn't even come out until after this video will on October 10th, 2023. So I'm sure some people are wondering how I read this. If you go down to the description of the book, it tells you what issues are contained in the book. And you always want to check between the Kindle version, the paperback version, and the hardcover. Because sometimes they're different, and sometimes the descriptions are wrong. So by checking multiple sources, it reinforces what you actually want to read and what actually is in the book. I then go read the issues, and thus I read the book. And there's a lot of people who say that's kind of messed up and then it, I didn't buy the book and support comic companies but I can honestly say doing it this way I read and buy far more books. There's a website that has so many comic series on it for free. You just got to deal with ads. And there's actually a ton of sites that do this. I made a video talking about one of those sites and I'll list it here for you. But before this, I was afraid to read some comic series because no one wants to buy a book and then it sucks. So now I can read whatever I want and if I like it, I then buy the book. Doing this, I've read far more comics. Some I never would have read before. And then if I like the book, I like having a physical copy. So I go and buy it, I put it on my shelf, and then if it's on my shelf, I know I really liked it. So before anyone yells at me for not supporting comic books, I'm reading and buying far more comics than ever before. If anything, I'm supporting them way more now. I can read all these series, talk about them here, maybe inspire someone else to read them. It's beneficial, so don't be a dick. But back to the Vader book. Star Wars Darth Vader Volume 7 Unbound Force. This one continues the story in Volume 6. It's called Unbound Force because the Empire finds an old artifact that wrecks havoc on all Force users. They essentially lose control of their abilities and now they're far more powerful than before. So this book deals with an out of control Vader which is pretty badass. And truthfully it would have been better based on that plot. It's still pretty good. I liked it but I think the idea of an out of control Vader is really cool. But what they actually do in the book, it's just not quite what you want. After catching up on the Vader series, I wanted a short read that's been on my list for a while, so I checked out X-Men Psylocke. This book contains a short four-issue series she had, and they throw in three old issues of X-Men that pertain to the story. I really like Psylocke. I think she's one of the cooler X-Men characters. It's a short read, and it brings her at odds with Wolverine. Basically, they both want to kill the same guy. Not a ton to say about this one since it was so short, but I really liked it. I want to buy it and add it to my collection, but people on eBay and Mercari want to sell it for like 70 bucks, all the way up to 170 And I liked it, but just not $170 worth. But if you like Psylocke, you want a short read, it's not bad, I recommend it. About a year ago, I read a book called Rogan Gambit, Ring of Fire, and I really liked that. I love Gambit. I think he is the coolest X-Men character. 
And after this book, there's a follow-up series called Mr. and Miss X. And if you haven't guessed yet, Gambit and Rogue get married. So this one is volume one of that series. I really enjoyed this book. I would have liked more actual Gambit and Rogue wedding and honeymoon stuff in it. But they kind of just sideline all that for action. It's got some Deadpool in it if you like that. And I will say, this book is very sexually charged. It was kind of odd. Like, obviously, they just got married. They're on their honeymoon. It's going to happen. But it was a bit lot. And they got to deal with some Shyar crap. And it's all right. It ties into the X-Men at least. But I really enjoyed it. But Volume 2 is slightly better. As I said, Volume 2 is better, so obviously I read Volume 2. This one continues the story, and I liked this one a lot better. We have an issue that has Rogue and Gambit move in together and throw a party with all their friends. I really liked that issue. It's interrupted by some people upset with Gambit. Rogue's powers then start to go crazy. Rogue and Gambit then get a gift that sends them to the Mojoverse. They then gotta fight Mojo and deal with Rogue's uncontrollable powers. They escape the Mojoverse, then they gotta deal with the people upset with Gambit. And the rest of the book is them fighting these thief guild people in uh, New Orleans. Gambit was considered their king but left, and now the guilds are fighting for power. There's some really badass Gambit parts I loved. It was freaking awesome. And then Rogue shows up just in time to help him. The series wraps up in Volume 2 here, but I really enjoyed it. I want more, and luckily there is more. The month is over now, but now I'm going back and I'm reading some old Gambit stuff, but I really recommend this book. And that's all the books I read this month and my thoughts on each one. I really appreciate the support on these videos. The first video I made like this only got about 30 views, second about 60. But the third I saw was around 80, so they're gradually improving here. And I think this one's the fourth or fifth, but I'm glad to see you guys like these videos. And if you want to see more like them month to month, say more in the comments below. It's a quick three seconds for you, but it means a lot to me, so I really appreciate it. But please like and subscribe if you like this video. Check out my Facebook page for exclusive insights into new videos and updates on my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.